Why are you so annoying? Says Ian. And you're going to laugh at this now. Anyone there? Hello. I will campaign naked everywhere I can. Once you prod in the right place. Hello everyone, Matt Chapman here on the Other Aces YouTube channel with a Q&A. That's a question and answer to you and me, thanks to Callum, who had this bright idea and thought to himself, you know what, we're going to ask for questions for chappers on social media, like as if that was ever going to go well. Um, plenty of you sent in stuff that, of course, I couldn't possibly answer without getting sacked from most of the people I work for straight away. But we've whistled it down to one or two things that hopefully we can make interesting for you and that you won't feel that the next few minutes are just minutes you have wasted out of your life. How optimistic are you about the future of national hunt racing? Um, I'm not optimistic for the future of racing, let alone national hunt racing. These are desperate times. We are run by a desperate team who I have zero faith in. National hunt racing is clearly in a problematic situation. Um, there aren't enough horses. Um, there are too many being sold abroad. Um, and that's an issue. Um, but you know what? I think it will survive probably longer than we all think because there is a hardcore fan base that love jumps racing. I love jumps racing. And I mean, they're going to have to whip me naked around central London if they're going to get stopped national hunt racing. I will campaign naked everywhere I can to make sure that this keeps on going because it's a brilliant sport. Does City of Troy win the Triple Crown? Um, my gut feeling is no. It's funny, when you look back at Camelot St. Ledger, I mean, how unlucky was Camelot? Not just because he was beaten by Henke, but just because he should have won it. Like, it doesn't even matter it was Henke. He was so unlucky. Um, my gut feeling is no, he's quite weak in the markets at the moment. And at the end of the day, it's a very hard thing to do, particularly with a horse that, might be going on dirt at some stage. I mean, if he wins the Guineas and the Derby, do you really want to go down the ledger route or would you quite like to try and win the Breeders' Cup Classic? Remember, the breeding of this horse suggests a little bit of dirt success wouldn't go amiss. So, um, anyway, to answer the question, no, City of Troy does not win the Triple Crown. This one's from Paul. He says, why do you have Tintin hair? Well, why not? Didn't. Didn't do Tintin any harm, did it? Hung out with his dog all day, a little snowy. Um, I mean, what's the problem? Uh, have a good look at it. Oh, it goes right up like that. I mean, to be honest, it just does it these days. I don't really need to put anything in it. I wake up with it like that. Sometimes when I'm in the gym, you bump into someone and it's all floppy. Obviously, you've just been in the steam room or sweating hard on the, the running machine. And they say, why, why is your hair not up? I mean... <laughs> It's a funny old game. It's like if I don't wear my boots on track, people think there's something wrong. Like, why have you not got your boots on? Who are the top three flat horses you're looking forward to seeing this season, says Eddie. This is, I like these kind of questions. I, I could go on forever here. Van Dijk, I just thought he was a monster two-year-old. Can't wait to see him. He's going down the Commonwealth Cup route, um, which is great for the Commonwealth Cup, because remember the Commonwealth Cup? Everyone says, oh, isn't the Commonwealth Cup amazing? No, it's been rubbish hasn't lived up to its expectations in any way. In fact, if it doesn't get some good horses running in it, it won't even exist for much longer because it won't qualify for Group 1 status. Um, but Van Dijk could change all that. I am, I've got to say I'm a bit of a groupie when it comes to the Simon and Ed Christopher stable. I love that stable. Um, and James Doyle, um, Christopher was telling me, even though he's not really part of that anymore, and Harry Davis is riding a lot of the Christopher horses now that that James is the Wathman Qatar boy and he's Varian's boy. He's anyone's boys but Chrisford now, basically. Um, but he will keep the ride on Van Dijk, so I'm very excited for him. Big Rock is not a horse that really will get a mention in any of these kind of things. But what he did at Ascot was absolutely, for me, it was the performance of 2023 on the flat. Absolutely destroyed them in the QE2. Um, tip by me, by the way. Uh, and he just won by distances, didn't he? Bit of mud, over a mile, big rock is about as exciting as you get. One of the few horses of the owner, of course, that's been left to the head boy um, in that extraordinary situation where they've <laughs> he's done really well for them and then they've, they've taken half his horses away, which doesn't seem very fair. But hey, that's the name of it. Look at me. 
brilliant on telly. Lou shifts all the time. Right, notable speech um, I thought was just scintillating at Kempton the other day. He's three out of three on the artificial. And obviously he's being trained for the Breeders' Cup, um, for the 2000 Guineas, I guess now. But the reason the Breeders' Cup is in my mind, hello, um, wouldn't it be great if he was trained for the Breeders' Cup Classic, like from now? Like, forget about turf racing. I know the artificial at Kempton is nothing like the dirt at Del Mar. But why not go down that route and see what happens? Who was your mentor in racing? So in my last year at university, I wrote to every newspaper and a fellow called John Cobb, who still writes in the Racing Post, was the news editor on The Independent. And he let me come and work for free during my last year at university on The Independent newspaper. And I didn't get paid a single penny, but I went up during my degree year and sat on the racing desk. I learned how to sub cards, like I could sub a whole newspaper on my own. Um, I learned how, obviously, the tipping side of it. Um, and I learned how to write. Well, not write, because I could write already, which was one of the things I could do. Um, but um, I learned how to, to, to come up with ideas, basically. In, the, in those days, it, it sounds crazy now, but international racing was nothing. I remember I wrote a French 10 to follow in The Independent. I mean, you wouldn't even get it in a newspaper these days. Um, but no one else had done it. I wrote two paragraphs on the Greyhound Derby, which got into the Independent. If you can imagine, like, Greyhounds hardly get into any paper anywhere, even the Racing Post uh, these days. Um, that's how different times were. I mean, we're not talking centuries ago, obviously, a few a couple of years ago. Um, so as a mentor, John Cobb, I guess, would be a mentor. I mean, any boss who hasn't sat me has been quite useful. Um, they'd all be mentors, um, even the ones that dig sat me. Um, because if I hadn't been sacked once from a tote job, um, I would never have worked in TV. So life is a funny old thing. Um, you never know what's around the corner. Um, but if you mean by mentor, and I'm sorry I'm going on a bit here, like who did I watch on TV like when I was young and admire? I mean, obviously, Bruff Scott was very good, Oaksy and all that lot, McCrory. I, did, I never thought to myself ever that, I want to do that or that as far as TV was concerned, because all I wanted to do was write. Writing was my thing. Um, but I found out very early in life that, that there was no money in writing. And if you were ever going to earn a few quid, TV was probably the way to do it. Um, but writing is what I love. I love writing. Um, but what I did do, um, uh, because one of the things that gets chucked to me, in fact, I'm sure, well, it probably might have been one of the questions Jack here is like, like, why are you the cheap man's John McCreary? That's the one I often get on social media. And it's such a weird one because, A, you know, I was put in the betting ring by ITV. I never wanted to be in the betting ring. But ITV said, would you like to come and join us? We want you to do the betting. Well, if someone says that to you from a terrestrial TV station, you don't go up and say, oh, no, I don't really fancy that, thanks. You say yes. So you end up doing the betting. But I never wanted to be standing in the betting ring because that's not what I think I'm good at. What I think I'm good at is interviewing people. But when it comes to mentors, I look, <laughs> and you're going to laugh at this now, um, I would look at someone like Jonathan Ross or Clarkson um, or uh, those kind of people, basically. Because for me, as a TV presenter, every person you speak to, you should be trying to get something off that could make go viral on the internet. Everyone who does a shift on Sky Sports Racing, every shift they go into, they should be thinking, what can we do today that could blow the internet? What can I get out of someone? And that's what I think people like Ross and Clarkson were very good at. Um, and that's how I try and do my job. Um, so that's, that's how I look at it. Who are your favourite people to interview? I mean, this could be such a long list. I mean, everyone knows I like Ashi Murphy, but Murphy's different now to what he was before his, his issues. He's not just, I'm talking just interviewing, he's not the same. It's not the same fun. And the problem with Ashi now is he has perfected how to answer your questions. If I say to him, you're riding this in France, he'll say, yeah, I'm riding so-and-so in France, in the so-and-so, live on Sky Sports Racing. He has perfected it. He knows what to say. Um... So that's slightly changed a bit. I love Sean Levy. I mean, obviously, I, I basically, I, 
I, I throw the ball down to him and wait for him to bat it at me. So all the weight questions come in. You have to be very careful about that kind of thing these days. Uh, but there are so many things. Callum Shepard. Now, I think he's turned into something very special, both written, absolutely beautiful words on the passing. Oh, poor old Stefano Kirky. And on a completely different line, he was great on the Sunday evening meetings as well, Callum Shepard. There's something going on with Shepard. He is becoming a great orator, and I'm liking that. Um, but so many... Tom Bellamy, he is hilarious, Tom Bellamy. Um, Sam Twiston Davis, Cobden. He's one of the funniest out there. Cobden. Um, Sean and James Bowen, although I can't really understand what they're saying most of the time. It's all Welsh. But, but they're really funny when I finally decipher what they're actually saying. Um, I just think there are so... I mean, look, probably the funniest jump jockey out there at the moment is, is, is Nikolai Chastel de Boinville. He is hilarious. People think he's being serious. It's, it, it just makes me chuckle. When he batted back a question I gave him at Cheltenham not so long ago... Well, people who thought he was being serious. It was just so funny. They just don't get him at all. Um, I mean, hundreds. I could go on forever. You don't want me to do that. And particularly the people who've put the battery in this camera don't want me to do that. Um, uh, Haggis, trainer. I love interviewing Haggis. Some are easy. Prescott. Anyone can interview Prescott. You can't go wrong. Gosden. Anyone can interview Gosden. It's, it's the ones that you have to just get them going. They're the ones that are fun in a nutshell. The easy ones anyone can do. But you just, just, you know one or two, you can prod a little bit. And once you prod in the right place, ooh, they will bite. Next question comes from Johnny on the email. He says, who is the greatest jockey of all time? On the flat, Pat Edry for me was just God. When he was in full swing with the old whip, when you could actually use it properly. And it was a thing of beauty. A jockey using the whip with a horse stretching and its stride, you can see its stride lengthening. That's a thing of beauty and Pat had that. I also feel that when Fallon was in full flow, that was a thing of beauty as well. And particularly as a punter. When Fallon started rowing and then gave it one. Ah, oh, you know, you're very close to what Fitzy thought the Grand National was like, but of course I've have had some good nights, so I can't say that. Um, and over jumps, you know, the greatest jockey of all time is Tony McCoy, isn't he? He's the, he's the undefeated heavyweight champion. He never lost. Well, I mean, obviously he lost, but he never lost a championship. He won everything. It has to be Tony McCoy. What's your favourite race to go to? I've always been a small race course person. Um, Plumpton, brilliant. Crowd cheer with a circuit to go. Real atmosphere. Same at Fontwell. Same at Newton Abbott. Um, I love those three tracks. Um, I think they're really special tracks. Um, of the bigger tracks, for me, it often just depends on the weather. You know, a sunny day at Goodwood, you're not going to get anything better than that. Sunny day at York, you're not going to get anything better than that. But the, the small jumps tracks, for me, special. You're very good for the sport. You know when anyone starts a question like that, there's something bad coming. Like, I like you, but... But why are you so annoying, says Ian. Um, probably because I'm so good. Being good annoys people, Ian. I'm happy being annoying. If I wasn't annoying, you wouldn't be watching this right now. Because if I'm annoying, then you don't agree with everything I say. And if everything I say, everyone just agrees with, then I am a pointless TV presenter. You should get annoyed at me. You should loathe me from day to day. Hopefully, occasionally, in a moment of madness, one or two of you might quite like what I say and have a bit of fun with it. But essentially, TV and being on telly is no different to normal life. You will walk into a bar or a pub, you might meet one stranger with a group of other people and end up quite liking someone. Chances are you won't like any of them. And TV is exactly like that. There is absolutely no reason in whatsoever why I shouldn't be the most annoying and one of the people you loathe most in the world. And that is exactly how it should be. Because you should loathe me, but occasionally maybe you'll like me.
and that's good TV. I'm Matt Chapman. Thank you very much for watching. This surely will be the first of numerous question and answers.